Hey, how's it going? I've done 15 pre-evolved runs to this point and I initially thought I almost had all the tops at least represented by a run, but upon closer inspection, there are actually 6 of the 14 Gen 1 toppings that I haven't done yet. The main reasoning behind this, because most of them are just bad, but today I wanted to give some representation to the good old fashioned bug tops. And you know what I ended up going with from the video title? But there honestly aren't many choices. Weedle is the most absolutely pathetic Pokemon that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy so we're not doing that. Caterpie is one of the four Pokemon that can't actually complete the game so we can't do that. Venonat looks slow and uninteresting. And then there's Paris. Now things worked a little bit different in Gen 1 for Bugtop, and that means that the world is a dangerous place for a grass and Bugtop. The main worries are that Paris has three different times four weaknesses. Fortunately, it's not as bad as it sounds, unlike the rock and ground tops that have to deal with water and grass. Our little fungus friend here only has to deal with the double weakness to flying, poison, and fire. Flying isn't that much of an issue since most of them will be using gust, it's a normal top move, and they'll eventually get phased out as the game goes on. And outside of our rival starting with Charmander and eventually the Blaine fight, fire is pretty much non-existent. Surprisingly, poison will be the most annoying since early game is littered with them from the start and we'll just see how that goes. Paris has really bad stats, specifically in HP and speed, and having a ton of weaknesses combined with being among the slowest Pokemon in the game means that it, this could be very frustrating. At least it has some decent attack to work with. Now I'm not going to go into detail about its moveset and I'm just going to say save that for the video, but it's not that deep and there are some new and surprising things to cover later in the video and that's why I chose Paris ultimately. I'm not necessarily a fan of doing repeat videos that JRose 11 has already done, but when you cover the same game, you really can't help but to eventually overlap when you've done as many videos as I've done. But before we begin, I do like to do Pokemon solo runs often, mainly focusing on Generation 1, and if that is of interest to you, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Likes and comments also help out small channels the most, so if you're someone who just never interacts and usually doesn't comment, do me a huge solid and just scroll down and type in don't burn me bro in the comments and help me break into that sweet algorithm and maybe get these videos recommended to some other like-minded individuals. So with that said, make sure to grab yourself a soda pop, sit back, relax, and let's see how our first buggy boy performs in today's video. Like always, I reset for decent DVs, and after naming our little bug appropriately to ward off fire attacks, our journey can now begin. Obviously, our first encounter is going to be a rare Pikachu that paralyzes us, and we are starting off the run right by just being annoyed. Paris starts off with Scratch, and grinding immediately is required, and it's very slow at the start. The main goal here for the run is to survive the early game and attempt to mitigate the awful post brock time that is inevitably coming. Eventually, I attempt my first trainer against a bug cat with a level 9 Weedle, and here you can see the problematic times 4 weakness to poison. This is one of the weakest Pokemon to ever live, but just look at that poison sting damage. This is the most damage that this Weedle is ever going to do in its entire life. I have to grind up a few levels, and it's not bad since Paris is in the medium fast leveling group, and at level 10, I do get past the trainer. Poison sting still hurts, but with the extra stats, it's not much of an issue, and Paris wins its first ever trainer battle, and I'm going to go buy the K computer just to celebrate. From this point, Paris is finally able to assert its dominance by showing the other 10 year old bug catchers who's the superior bug in the forest, and I'm able to clean up some easy levels from the two bug catchers that are left. Eventually I do backtrack and I take on the optional rival fight. I do fail one sand attack laced attempt, but I do win the second one. There's really not much strategy for these early fights. You pretty much just scratch and pray that you do more damage than the opponent, and all I can say here is thank god that Gust is not a flying type move in Generation 1. The last trainer to pick up is the junior trainer in the gym and Paris handles this one pretty well. Usually bad Pokemon can struggle here since the Pokemon do a lot of damage or you can get caught in a sand attack loop from the Sandshrew and there isn't really any issues here. This gets us up to level 15 and this is the point in the run that I started testing the waters against Brock. The level 15 attempts weren't great. I can't even get past the Geodude consistently and even if I could, I'm so low going into the Onyx that I wouldn't stand a chance either way. I'm going to have to grind and as I try more Brock attempts through the levels, it's feeling like I'm going to have to get to level 20 for 
leech life's neutral damage, but at level 19, I do have some solid attempts, and that makes me think that it's possible, and I can't possibly show all the failures, but just know that it took me until my 14th attempt to get through this one, but let's take a look at this very slow victory. There's not much strategy here, but there's a couple of things that you need to go right. You can't utilize Stun Spore just yet because he has 5 full heals he keeps in his pockets for no reason at all, but you'll need a lot of them later. The first thing that needs to happen here is that you don't want Geodude to heavily use Defense Curl at the start. In this footage, it does start out with a Defense Curl, but one is fine as long as it uses some tackles after that. This allows Scratch to chip through about 40% of its health, and eventually you'll get the Defense Curl, so there's really no avoiding that. This means that your Scratches will be doing very pathetic damage, but ultimately, the second thing that needs to happen here is that you eventually need to get a critical hit at some point during the fight. Paris does have abysmal speed, but it does have a 1 in 25 chance to crit, and eventually it's going to happen like it does here, and that's pretty much how Geodude has to go. Onyx has a little bit more nuance to it. Scratch isn't going to do a lot, but the key to this fight is Stun Spore during its bide turns. It opens up with a bide, and from here, I use Stun Spores until the 5 full heals are gone, and then the paralysis stays on the Onyx. This means that I will outspeed it, and I get the chance for Onyx to just miss turns. It's also worth noting that if a Pokemon is fully paralyzed during a bide, it just ends the bide right there. From there, it's a matter of scratching when bide isn't being used, and then just wasting the bide turns with Stun Spore PP. You honestly just have to hope it doesn't use Tackle too much, and there is a 75% chance that it won't do that, so the odds are pretty good. Even with a lot of luck with Paralysis skipping its turns and avoiding a lot of Tackles, I still barely survived this fight with a mere 8 HP, but avoiding having to grind up that extra level to 20 really saved me anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes of in-game time, and that's great. And if you're wondering, Paris saves here at 1 hour and 57 minutes. Uh, this isn't immediately after Brock, but sub 2 hours isn't the worst start, we've had worse. From there, I level the 20 on the Comfy Shorts Trainer to get Leech Life, and now Paris can get its revenge on the Poison Types. It's only a meager 20 base power move, but the coverage it provides on top of getting stabbed really helps a lot for the majority of the run. Just look at what it does to this Ekans here. I'm over leveled, so I do the bare minimum through Mount Moon, and once I'm in Cerulean, I head straight for the gym. But first, a special shout out to the trainer just before Misty that uses a gold dean that has peck. Suck a dick. Now it's time for Misty, and Paris has a great matchup here. I resist water, so that means we'll only be seeing tackles, and while Staryu is only a water type, Leech Life still does good damage here. You can regain any lost health, and you can easily get past it. Against the Starmie, Paris is even better since Leech Life's bug typing is super effective against Psychic. This makes Misty a very easy fight overall, and that always feels good. Next up is rival number 2, and I do fail once. Charmander using Ember after my accuracy was dropped from Sand Attack is all you really need to know. The second intent was successful, and there's really two things that you want to see from this fight. The first is that you want to avoid sand attacks, obviously. Pidgeotto will do some decent damage, but the good thing is that Abra is just a vessel for you to get all that health back with Leech Life. When you make it to the end of the fight, the easiest way to get past is if the AI just doesn't go for Ember, which is what happens here, and I'm able to scratch my way through for the victory. It's worth noting that you can survive an Ember or two if necessary, but it's just much easier if the AI cooperates with you. The preceding route to Bills isn't too bad. The level advantage and the tons of poison tops means Leech Life and Scratch makes it an easy time. The only slow trainer is the Hiker with an Onyx. You can't blow through all of your Leech Life, so you do have to use Scratch some, and with it using Bind, it's just a slog and it's really the only slowdown in this section. Now let's skip ahead to the SSN, and Body Slam is a must. That, along with Dig that we got just before leaving Cerulean, will make up Paris' main damaging options for the entire run. I do pick up a rare candy from the gentleman, but more importantly I learned Spore. When you think of broken, overpowered things in Generation 1, you think of stuff like Rap not letting a Pokemon take its turn if you're faster, maybe Psychic Tops being oppressive, or Amnesia boosting special by two stages, and giving you badge boost. Those all come to mind, but I'm here today to proclaim that Spore is the top of the list. It puts a Pokemon to sleep, and sleep itself is beyond powerful in Generation 1, we all know that, but this move has a 100% chance to do it. It's the only move in Pokemon history that has this type of accuracy for sleep, but it's a little under the radar since only Paris and Parasect can learn it in these games. This means that if you outspeed, any battle is over with. Even if you don't outspeed, but you can get this to connect, you can still win many battles that you otherwise wouldn't. I can't stress enough 
how strong this movie is. And this is the main reason I picked Paris because this movie intrigued me a whole lot. But that's enough gushing. Let's take a look at rival number three. With Spore in hand, you're going to see how things are going to change. This means that in most battles that are even remotely threatening, the opponent really only gets one shot at Paris and it needs to one hit it or it's going to get put to sleep. And with Paris's decent attack and access to body slam and dig, it can get through most things. It's on display in this fight and the important part is at the end against a fire type which Paris usually trembles in fear against but it can survive the ember which just means Charmeleon is going to get put to sleep and it's never going to recover. This move is a game changer for the tiny and weak Paris. So let's pick up at Lieutenant Surge. I don't even heal because why would I? I can just put the Voltorb to sleep and I can recover some health with Leech Life and I have no drawbacks for it. After that I don't put the Pikachu to sleep and since I resist electric attacks I go straight for the one hit with Dig and even the Raichu isn't threatening to Paris. It's another good matchup for our fungi friend and we're just moving on. But before I progress, I am worried about Paris's speed, so with what remaining power points I have left, I do expend them on Diglets inside their cave to get some stat experience to see if that kind of smooths some things out. I don't spend a long time in here, but when in Rome as they say. From there, Rock Tunnel isn't worth mentioning, so let's pick back up at Celadon. I pick up the usual fresh water and fly, and then I opt to do Erica first. I once again have an excellent matchup here, but I do decide to battle her underling trainers for some very easy experience before I move on to the leader fight. And this fight is simple. I do get poison, but Spore ensures that that's going to be all that I have to worry about for the rest of the fight. Leech Life does super effective damage and heals up the chip damage I take from poison, and Body Slam can just slice through the forever weak Tangela before I utilize Leech Life on the Bile Plume. And that just makes us take another easy badge. Paris is killing it since it's overcame that Brock fight. The only thing I have left to do is visit the Rocket Hideout. I do the bare minimum and I rush to the first Giovanni encounter. Since I have access to Dig for super effective damage on both the Onyx and Rhyhorn, I don't have to bother with Spore. I should have just put the Kangaskhan to sleep in hindsight because it almost ends up beating me, but I do come out ahead. It's got me a little worried about Paris if Kangaskhan can do that well against me when I have a level advantage, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Instead, it's time to fly over to Pokemon Tower and get ready for rival number 4, everyone's favorite easy fight. This fight is basically just a weaker version of the third rival fight plus a Gyarados, and now since I'm significantly higher level, I just use Spore a little bit just to ensure that no shenanigans happen. And overall, it's just a steamroll. There's not much reason to go into depth here, but we've seen this fight already earlier, basically. I finish up the tower, and then I take a bike ride down to Fuchsia, and then I dip into the Safari Zone to pick up the run's final HMs, and from there I call an audible. I'm not 100% confident in Paris during the Poison Gym, or just during the second half of the game in general, and I know I'll eventually need some more speed. I go back to good old reliable Diglett Cave to grind up more stat experience for speed. I'm also getting some attack stat experience here, so while you could argue that this is a time waster, I think you'd be wrong. We are getting close to lots of fights that Paris might fail at if I don't get faster and I'm hoping that this is going to pay off. When I'm done there, I head back to Fuchsia and this is the part of the run where the very weak Leech Life pretty much runs its course. This is the last time that it's going to be useful since there are tons of psychic types inside the Poison Gym for some reason. It's not too bad and the only trainer that really gives me any trouble is the Juggler with the one Hypno, but even that isn't terrible since I have Spore. I finish up all the optional underling trainers and then we move on to Koga and honestly I was really worried about this fight. It has given me trouble on other runs with weaker Pokemon and since I'm times four weak to poison I prepare a lot and to my surprise this battle was actually very easy and I one shot it. I finished the battle at full health and with the help of Spore and the super effective dig this one's a massacre. This isn't what I was expecting but I'll gladly take this outcome for our fifth badge. Now it's time for Silphco. I do pick up some optional goodies but the main thing of note is that I pick up Swords Dance to replace Leech Life. It's a badge boosting move that'll help our speed and greatly increase our attack and when you couple that with Spore, that means you have yourself a very formidable combination on your hands. I don't do a ton of extra battles, but I battle a couple behind the teleporter that leads to the beds to manipulate my experience so I won't level up at a bad time during the fight. So this leads us to rival number 5 and here we're going to take a look at just how broken a moveset like this is when you set it up right. On the Pidgeot, there's there's nothing I can do about taking a move, so you just have to take the wing attack. It does double super effective damage and it really hurts, but Spore ensures that the sleep connects, body slams can take it down, and since we manipulated our experience, I level up directly after, just as planned. The execute is next, out speed which essentially means game over for the fight. I put it to sleep and then I fully set up three swords dance to boost our attack out of the planet and I get a lot of speed from the badge boost. I take it out with a body slam and from there it's just over with. 
I don't even need to use Spore at this point because I just outspeed the rest of his team despite them all being powerful Pokemon including a Charizard which is normally the bane of Paris' existence. This was a dominant display and you can see just what Paris can do when things are set up correctly. It's pretty impressive. Now let's cover Giovanni 2 just for completion's sake. There's not really much to say here. I don't really mess around and I do the same strategy. Spore into a Swords Dance into a Sweep quickly wipes out his team which are almost all weak to dig. No one is safe from Paris when it outspeeds you, bud. Next up is Sabrina, and this fight probably sounds easy. Physically frail Pokemon against what you've already seen sounds great, right? But I'm rushing, and we make some mistakes here. Immediately, Kadapa crits me with a side beam, and it does a ton of damage. It's not the best start, but it shouldn't matter for Paris, right? So I use Spore, I set up my Swords Dance, and then I take out the Kadabra. But the key mistake that I made was I didn't look at my experience, and I just level up. I lose all of my badge boost speed. And this just means that the Mr. Mime gets off of confusion to chip me down even further before it goes down. Then the Venom Moth comes in, it gets off a of Leech Live, and it further chips me down to the Red Hell. And this one's just not looking good with the Alakazam coming in, but it just goes for Reflect. I use four, and that's it. I make a huge blunder, but I'm not punished, and I take the win, and those are pretty much the best kinds of mistakes in my opinion. Now it's time for a relaxing break with a swim down to Cinnabar to take on the fire type gym. I don't need to tell you the risk that this involves. I have to battle some trainers to manipulate experience, and there are some very fast evolved Pokemon lurking within some of the trainers, and it can just quickly end the battles if you're trying to rush like you see here. This is totally unrelated, but don't you guys I just feel like Kanto Ninetales is completely underrated for such a great Pokemon. I feel like these days it's overshadowed by its equally as great Alolan form, but I just really like Kanto Ninetales. Eventually with our mushrooms singed a little bit, it's time for a little Tombstoner, brother. And the game dares to tell me that it's a bad call before moving on to the blind fight. And Paris may not top the tier list, but it's fights like these and that mid to late game potential that has really made it a blast in the run so far. With properly manipulated experience, I spore, swords dance, and I set up the sweep. And it's really a beautiful thing to see this times four week to fire buggy boy just roll over the fire type gem. I do respect the Arcanine though. I put it to sleep, and from there I accidentally click swords dance. But all that I really needed to do was go for a single dig. But other than that, it's a clean victory, and it's probably my favorite part of the entire run. The eighth gem is the last thing I need to do, and I don't even bother manipulating my experience, and I make a beeline straight for Giovanni. I throw caution to the potentially mid battle, level up, and I do the usual spore into swords dance setup. This works amazingly like we've already seen, but I do end up leveling at the very end on the ride on. But thankfully it's slow and just not very good, and I keep the swords dance attack buff, and we can easily take it down with a single dig. And that's it, that's the regular season is done. There are six more trainers left, but Paris has looked really strong these last few fights. And that leads us to rival number six, and let's see how it goes since rival number five was such a clean battle. The start is nearly identical. You have to take a move from Pidgeot no matter what, but a spore into Swords Dance afterwards leaves you in a position to one-shot it. From there, the fight plays out exactly the same as last time. I'm just sweeping left and right, and everything is feeling the wrath of Paris. I'm, do I'm going great here. And that is until I level up going into the Alakazam. It does good damage to me, but that isn't the problem. I resist Psychic, but losing all of my badge boost speed means that the Charizard is going to do enough damage to kill about 37 generations of Paris and pretty much end its entire bloodline. For good measure, it does crit on the flamethrower while I'm already at 20 health, and that might be the biggest overkill I've ever seen in Pokemon history. The easy solution here is to fly back to Pokemon Mansion and get our experience set up so we don't level up at the end of the fight. After that, I do go back and give it another try. Then the run comes to a screeching halt when even with the badge boost and the properly manipulated experience, I discover that the very slow Paris still doesn't outspeed the Alakazam with the badge boost which means that we won't outspeed the Charizard as well and we might have a problem here guys. I try multiple times but the results are always the same. At that point I have to sacrifice my final in game time and return to the Pokemon Mansion to grind just a little bit more. I want to save rare candies because if this fight is that difficult imagine the champion fight at least that's my thought process at this point. I get my experience until I'm close to 56 and then I go give it a shot where I naturally take out the Pidgeot then I level up then I set up on the Rhyhorn but the Alakazam still outspeeds me and ultimately the faster Charizard is just waiting for me while I'm barely hanging on at the end. I try this fight five more times. I have zero success and at this point I'm getting really desperate. I've hit a brick wall in this fight. I'm simply too slow so I heave up 
the Hail Mary strategy of going back to Diglett Cave to attempt to beat some speed out of them to absorb them into my Paris, and I keep repeating this process until I cap out my speed. When I cap my speed stat experience, I go over to Celadon and I spend my six figures worth of Poke Dollars on various stats. It's always smart to save beforehand, buy a bunch of them, and see how many you can actually use before committing to this, and when I'm done with the entire process, I'm actually fully trained in all of my stat experience. I'm out of trainers inside of Pokemon Mansion, so I desperately make my way to Cycling Road to pick up some of the cue balls and bikers here to cap off another level so that the stat experience can actually take effect, and I cannot stress how frustrating this specific fight was, and I spent a lot of time trying to get Paris over this hump. Perhaps just using the rare candies would have been the best thing, but I honestly just thought if I was struggling this hard now, using my limited supply of candies when I still have the Elite 4 left just felt like asking to exchange my immediate struggles with future struggles. I finally make my return at level 57, and I'm immediately met with a wing attack crit that nearly one shots me, but with 7 HP, I can still make it to the end of the fight to see if I made any progress, and I have it. All of that work was for nothing because Alakazam and the Charizard still out speed me and guys at this point I'm basically hysterically laughing like Walter White on the Breaking Bad episode Cross Space this fight is making me mental and I try again and again and again and I'm hoping that maybe the Charizard goes for a different move or maybe it misses but it's just not working. The strategy that I ended up going with can only be described as both extremely desperate and extremely lucky. It's almost laughable how dumb it was and I can only say that it's the most generation one thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I do the same strategy at the start. I'm taking a wing attack no matter what and then I set up into a swords dance and the hilarious thing that I finally got to work was the Rhyhorn using tail whips. In some of my failures I started noticing it but when one didn't affect the outcome of the speed I started wondering about two and well guys after about 15 more attempts I finally got this Rhyhorn to tail whip me two times before I took it out and that's all it took. From there with those two extra 12.5% boost in speed from the badge boost that's all it took to push me over the edge to be able to outspeed the rest of the fight and finally get the victory. It's hilarious and it pretty much encompasses everything that I love about Generation 1, but I can't say that I'm happy with it. Honestly, this one felt a little dirty, a little cheap, and if I run into another wall in the last fights, I might be in some real trouble. The fact that this fight alone took me about an hour of in-game time to get past doesn't leave me feeling too confident about the Elite Four, especially when you think about that champion fight looming ahead. He just has higher levels, better moves, and better Pokemon on so it might be really tough. As far as Victory Road goes, I don't do a whole lot other than battle a select few trainers I like the cool trainer with the chancy since it gives a ton of experience and now let's hold our breath as we see what Paris can do. I'm proceeding with caution here after our rival number 6 struggles so that means getting our feet wet without using candies on Lorelai just to see how Paris is going to do. I'm level 59 against the Dugong and of course I'm not going to outspeed it but let me introduce you to one of Paris's many weaknesses that we haven't talked about yet and that's Ice. Aurora being nearly breaks us in half, but I do have Spore and Swords Dance, and through that, all things are possible. I set up, and then a Body Slam takes us on. Next up is Cloyster. I fully expect its defensive bulk to be able to survive a Body Slam, even with the boost, so that means I have to use Spore. It's Spore time, guys. Afterwards, it does manage to barely hang on, so it was a good call, but a second Body Slam does move us on. Slowbro is also a tanky boy, but I don't fear its offense. The first Body Slam fails to take it out, and all it does is retaliate with a resisted Water Gun for a time tiny bit of damage before it finally goes down as well. Jinx is next, and I'm scared of Jinx for many reasons, so I just use Spore on it, I put it to sleep, but it turns out to be a waste because Body Slam can just one hit it, but things are going pretty great so far. Last up is our old dear friend Lapras, I outspeed, but I do put it to sleep, and then I just beat its ass, and you know the drill at this point. Even without candies, Lorelai's easy, but I'm still cautious, although it was impressive. Now speaking of beating someone's ass, it's time for Bruno. Just to assert our dominance, I don't even heal. I said up and I just tear through his pathetic excuse of a team and I don't even take a single point of damage in return. It's a very easy fight and if you expected anything else then welcome to the channel. You need to adjust your expectations for Bruno but welcome. And since I'm doing so well I figured it's time to use candy since Agatha will be fast and I don't want to make it more tough than it needs to be. I get up to level 68 for this attempt. On the first Gengar all the questions for this fight get answers. The first one is that if I can hit some luck on its first move and it goes for a nightshade which is great. Best case scenario. That means Spore can put it to sleep. And the second question is if three Swords Dance will give us enough speed to go first.
first, and amazingly it does. So with those two favorable things, a dig is all it takes to get past, and since I outspeed the first Gengar, that means I'm going to outspeed at least the next three Pokemon. Golbat goes down to a single body slam, and thank god we can avoid any demoralizing hazes before moving on. Haunter comes in with its elite sprite, and I make a mistake here, I accidentally click body slam, and it could have been devastating, but thankfully, it just goes for a wasted dream meter, and I don't get punished for being stupid, and that's always good. Arbok is barely worth mentioning, it's always the weak link and the very frail, so let's get to the final Pokemon of the fight, and on one hand, I don't outspeed the final Gengar, and that's bad, but on the other hand, I'm healthy enough at this point to survive pretty much anything that throws at me. It just goes for a toxic that doesn't connect, and from there it's just a matter of hitting a dig, and it's a one shot. I'm surprised that this one was as easy as it was, but Paris is gaining some confidence at this point, hell I'm gaining some confidence. But can Paris continue the streak on Lance? I don't have any super effective moves for any of his Pokemon, but Spore guys, we have Spore. Gyarados is up first, and you always have to hold your breath here to not get something like a Hyper Beam critical hit, but it just goes for Dragon Rage, and sorry buddy, you only get the one move against Paris, that's all you get. I use Spore, and you know how this one's gonna go, so I set up, I use a Body Slam, and we move on. And since I'm boosted, I both outspeed both of the Dragonairs, and then I utilize Dig here, and we just take them out in a single hit, and that moves us on deeper into the fight. Now Aerodactyl's next, I don't outspeed, I take a bite, I put it to sleep, and then I hit it with the resisted body slam that doesn't knock it out, and for some reason it wakes up, I don't put it back to sleep, it gets a potion, and eventually it gets a supersonic off on me before it goes down, so now I'm confused, and last up is the Dragonite, and you can just guess what happens here. I don't hit myself, I outspeed, and I use Spore, you don't even get to play the game today. It turns out I didn't even need to do that, cause body slam is just a one shot, but that's Lance down, and this has been really easy, but now we have the champion fight. I struggled mightily on the last rival fight, and I'm worried about this one a lot. I burned my final rare candies, and let's see if Paris can cap off an amazing Elite Four run. So Pidgeot is first, and for a while, it was unavoidable to take the heavy damage at the start, but here, finally in the champion fight, it decides to go for a mirror move, and since it outsped me, it just does nothing. That means it's sport time, baby. No more battling for this bird as I sit up, and I take it out, and this is the best possible position I could hope for. Alakazam is second, and I don't outspeed it, and immediately I'm getting PTSD flashbacks thinking about the Charizard at the end of the fight, but it just goes for a recover, and once again I get lucky on bad AI move selection before taking it out. The third Pokemon is Rhydon, and all you need is Dig, it takes it out, one hit, quickly, let's move on. Now it's time for Executor, and this thing is too annoying to take any chances with, so I put it to sleep before it can do the same to me. A Body Slam can one hit it with all the boost, but I still wanted to be extra cautious because all it would take is some bad luck to start getting chipped down and put to sleep, so I, I play it safe. The penultimate Pokemon is Gyarados, and once again, I don't want to take any risk. I go for Spore, and I'd hate to have some freak critical hit get through to me this late in the fight, and now, after we take it out, it's time for Paris' Nightmare, a level 65 Charizard. I expected to get taken out immediately and have this one be a reset, but somewhere between rival number 6 and this fight, I've gained enough stats to actually outspeed it, and I've said it once, and let's go ahead and say it for the final time. If Paris outspeeds you with Spore, you do not get to play the game, and that means it's over for the champion, and that caps off the run, and it's over. Paris has done it, and honestly, it was a very dominating Elite Four run. This is only the second Pokemon out of all of my runs, including the Evolve runs, that I've ever done the Elite Four in a single shot, without a single reset. It's five up, five down, and that just shows you how strong Paris can be at its full potential. I'll talk more about it later, but let's just take a look at how it did first. And Paris finishes the game with a level of 72, but more importantly, an in-game time of 6 hours and 54 minutes. And that might surprise you since I feel like I'm really editing and cutting this video down to make a compact video, but it wasn't that fast. So was the time great? Absolutely not. But let's talk about where it should probably rank on the tier list. Now looking over it, it's very clear that this is a C tier dark green range along with our Rhyhorn and Psyduck runs. And I'm going to put this in the middle of those two. Rhyhorn I think was just straight up better, but although Psyduck does have a slightly faster time, I think that Paris has more upside and had more moments of dominance during certain parts of the game. So I'm going to give it the edge here. We're putting it in the middle. When Paris is at its best, it's really a force to be reckoned with. But in reality, I think the run is just a showcase about how powerful Spore is. It's shocking how overpowered this move is 
and the only thing I can say about it is that it's pretty nutty and honestly it's a shame that it's only on Paris and Parasect but what can you do? If you take away Spore, I'm not even sure where Paris would be at. It's very frail, it has very low HP, it has one of the lowest speed stats in the entire game and it can just be very frustrating to play. The pre-Brock time, all that grinding, and then the rival number six specifically were very low points of the run. But outside of that, it was actually pretty good. But before I sign off, I would like to say that Spore is still a very intriguing move to me. And I would love to use it again. And you might be seeing an immediate Parasect run for the next video for a how fast run to see if it can surprise me. Because I did have a lot of fun despite this being a seven hour run and not that great. I had fun. That's about all I have for you guys today. If you are still listening, you're a real one. I do appreciate you. And I guess... I guess I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye!